Hello, my name's Stephen Carr, and I'd like to welcome you to another SketchUp cooking class. In this part of the exercise, we're going to complete the final handrails for the salt box house, our exercise number two. So to do this, um, we just I'm just going to give you some examples on just little information, things we can follow. We know that this post is 12 inches, so that means the handrail should basically be set at 6 inches. So I'm just going to use the measuring tape tool and give myself a guideline here. 6 inches in, 6 inches back, and if we look at our handrails, we know that a handrail should be 42 inches high, so I'll just come up here. 42 inches. Okay, I'm trying to do a guideline. Undo. Guideline. 42 inches. And it's a little hard to see the guideline here because we have our textures on. So if I just change to color, it makes it a little bit easier for this part. Now I'll just go across here by 6 inches. And so we know that the top of the handrail will be here. The bottom of the, ha the handrail should not be any greater than four inches. So now we have our two positions. This is for the top. This is for the bottom of our handrail. So I'm just going to create a the bottom part. I'm just over just on the side here. I'll just create a 3.75 by 1.75. Actually, just make that three by five. Okay, undo, undo. Okay, just try that again. Actually, three point five, comma, one point seven five. And I'm just going to go on the top here. 3.5 comma 3.5. It doesn't really matter what size you use, just as long as you use something. This is basically a 2x4, so this would be like a 4x4. So I'm just going to move this object from the midpoint. It's getting a little bit closer. to this intersection and then I'll move this one also from the midpoint to this intersection. The bottom one I'm fine with. The top one I might want to do a little bit of work on it. So we'll just zoom in a little bit so we can see it. I'm just going to, again I'm going to keep this simple. Uh, in class we talked about problems we can have with rounded edges. So I'm just going to keep this as a straight edge. That's fine, and then I'm just going to create a little rectangle in here, and then I'm just going to copy that, move copy to the other side. That just gives me some little areas that I can clear off. And that gives me my profile for my handrail there. And I have my profile for my handrail here. So we're going to use the Follow Me tool. We've done this a few times. I I can't use it enough. It's a great tool. So I just go out a little bit farther so I can see the area that I want to work with. So I need to get this path to go from here up to this post or actually past the post is good. So to start with, I think I'm going to select my two posts, and now I'll hide them. And now with the line tool, I'm going to create my path to here and up to here. So that should be past the post. That's good. That's all we really need to do. So if we remember the follow me tool, for the fall, we first we select the path, hold down the shift because it's multiple selection, click on the tool, click on the profile. Now that is really cool. That is looking really good. We have to repeat the same steps again for the bottom. Click on the 
path. Hold down shift so I can do multiple. Just zoom in a little bit closer so I can see it. Click on follow me. And there you are. It's, now that looks really, really quite good. So the only problem is, is that I got to get out my little skill saw here and cut this in so that it fits properly. So my electronic skill saw, I'll go into edit here and on hide all. And that brings me back my columns or my posts. So I'm just going to triple click on this. One, two, three. Right click. And I'm going to intersect. That's my skill saw. Intersect face with model. Do the same on the bottom. One, two, three. Right click. Intersect face with model. And we'll just see what my electronic skill saw did for me here. So I'll just, again, I'll just select these two columns and right click and hide them and I have my lines are all divided up here so I can just take out my eraser and I can just go across here and just quickly get rid of those things that's kind of cool this is really really cool actually I'm just this is a very very cool tool and now I'll go into the corner and do the same thing just be careful that you don't accidentally erase too much looks like maybe I've lost my bottom so I'm not sure have I no I haven't everything looks good my only mistake was thinking that I made a mistake okay so let's continue on this with my electronic skill saw and just clip clip off all these little pieces it's looking really really good so now what I want to do is I want to select these I'm going from right to left which means it's a crossing selection right click make a group and I'm going to do the same thing here right click make a group okay this is important because now when we try to work with uh, putting our posts on here or our spindles it will really help us if this is a group if it's not we're going to probably find we have a problem so I'm just going to add another construction line I'm trying to get it on the midpoint here there we go that's on the midpoint so I'm just going to draw a little circle here get on here and uh, I'm going to make my radius three quarters of an inch, 0.75. So that gives me a nice little circle. And I need to be able to just pull this up to the underside of the handrail. That's really, really good. So I'm going to make this a component as well. One, two, three. Right click, make component. And I'll use the last three letters of my first three letters of my last name, dash, spindle, and create. Okay, so now I have created my spindle. What I want to do is I need to do a move, and then I'm going to do a multiply. So I'm just going to pan over here a little bit, and now I'll select my object. I'm going to click on move. Just going to click on the floor here because it's too hard over there. And control. So we know that the maximum space is uh, four inches, the max maximum gap. And the spindle is one inch and a half. So I'm just going to make this five. So I'm just going to type in five, enter. Now this time I'm going to go multiply or times. And I'm going to say 21. And that one, that works out just perfect. So now you can see that the spindles have, are already all in position. So this is really quite nice. I need to do the same thing on this side. So I'm just going to, again, do a guideline to the midpoint.
And then I'm going to select one of my little spindles, do a move copy. Just move it a little bit this way. Again, I'm going to do a move copy. And again, I'm just on the floor here and I'm going to come across here five inches, five enter times. I think I just have to do 20 this time. Let's just back up and have a look. There you are. So now I've got a few little construction lines I want to erase. Some guidelines I don't need or that path. I don't need that path. Oh, I just see I have a little little something here. I'll just think I can delete that by just going around here and delete. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to select all of this. Right click and make it into a group. Okay, another construction line to erase. So now I can go into edit on hide all. And now all I really need to do is do a move copy and then I'm going to do a scale minus one to get my post over to the other side. So I'll just select this group, click on move, control for copy, come across here in my red axis. Doesn't really matter where I go to, it's all right. Now I'm going to change to scale and I'm going to click on the middle scale grip and pull it across here and type minus one. Now I've got my handrail set from left side to right side. Now I just have to move it. And let's just go in and just have a little look here. I think it's looking pretty good. All right, I'll just uh, just click here so I get out of the group. Pan out a little bit, zoom extents, and put my textures back on. So now I can select these objects, holding down shift, 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 and I can go into my entity info. And I'm going to change that from layer zero to my deck layer so that it'll be affected when I turn the deck off. It gets turned off. All right, so that completes this part. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. Again, review this. Uh, you can review it at your own pace, and good luck with it.